na kabenta kikobor ke baman kasngi subscribe yo antor news Mr. Speaker, sir, I beg to move that this House do now discuss the second phase of interstate boundary settlement between Meghalaya and Assam and the need of reviewing the OMU sign between the two Chief Ministers. Uh, motion now moved. You may initiate the discussion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Thank you so much for allowing me to discuss about the second phase of interstate boundary settlement between Meghalaya and Assam and the need of reviewing of the MOU sign between the Chief Minister of Meghalaya and the Chief Minister of Assam. Mr. Speaker, sir, when we talk about the interstate boundary settlement between Meghalaya and Assam, yes, it is a long pending issue that the past government of Meghalaya had tried the level best to solve the issue. It may be noted that the state government in its letter Letter number POL 78 stroke 2010 stroke 209. Dated Shillong, the 8th August 2011, had claimed that over 2,765.14 square kilometer approximately of the land belonged to a state. As per the explanation given by the state government on the 8th August 2011. The border disputes between Meghalaya and Assam had taken place in the 12th sector as follows. Tarabari, 4.69 square kilometer. Jizang, 13.53 square kilometer. Hahim, 3.51 square kilometer. Boklapura, 1.57 square kilometer. Nongwa Mautamur, 137.51 square kilometer. Kanapara, Pelingkata, 2.29 square kilometer. Desh Domaria, 484.72 kilometers. Kanduli and Psyar, 12.80 plus 64 square kilometers. Block 1 and Block 2, 500. 37.54 plus 1,009.88 square kilometer and Ratachera, 11.20 square kilometer. As per explanation of the state government made in the year 2011, the total area of 12 disputed sectors is 2,765 square kilometer. It is, however, undeniable that more areas are being encroached. It may be mentioned that the Honorable Chief Minister of Meghalaya and the Chief Minister of Assam met on the 23rd July 2021 in Shillong and on the 6th August 2021 in Dispur in the state of Assam. The outcome of these two meetings is that both the state signed a historic agreement for closure in six dispute sectors that were taken out for resolution in the first phase. That is, number one, Tarabari, number two, Zizang sector, number three, Hahim sector, number four, Boklapara sector, number five, Kanapara Pilangkata sector, and number six, Ratachera sector. Both the state had constituted the regional committees in the three districts. That is, Ribhoi Regional Committee, West Hills Regional Committee, 
and East Gentle Hills Regional Committee. After constituted, the three regional committees had visited the villages that falls under the six areas of difference to hear the voice of the residents and to verify the name of the villages and also to verify the principal criteria for approaching the issue which include number one historical facts number two ethnicity number three administrative convenience number four willingness of the people and number five geographical continuity after several meetings held by the regional committees reports were made and sent to the respective state governments even though i'm not a member of the regional committee but it is disheartened to say that the government did not fully consider the resolution made by the regional committees. For example, the Riboy Regional Committee had submitted the report and suggest that all villages in Kanapara, Pilangata sector and Boklapara sector falls in Meghalaya. But sir, unfortunately, MOU signed by the two chief ministers clearly indicated that the resolution made by the regional committees has not been fully considered as many areas of the Kanapara Pilangata sector of the Himamalim, like the ASTC camp at Temarwet Kanapara, Dreamland Resort at Kanapara, Fields of Yonkuli, Maikuli, and Pilangkata, right Marwet. Plot of land at Barapathar, Fish Pond, Momori Bills at Maikuli, Maikuli, now falls on the Assam as per MOU site. Furthermore, it is clearly noted that the MOU has many negative impact. It may be mentioned that the Meghalaya government in the year 2011 had claimed over 2.29 square kilometer within Kanapara Pilankata sector. But now it is left only with 0 0.55 square kilometer. Therefore, we lost about 1.74 square kilometer just because of the MOU. In Boklapura sector, the Hima Jirang and the Hima Nongspong had lost about 1.01 square kilometer, which included Jimrigaon and the Lungkong village. Such similar cases were seen in the West Castles district, whereby many villages that falls under the Kasish Imship, which were previously not included in the explanation made by the government in 2011. But presently, these were included in Assam. To name a few such villages alike, the Namtarabari, Watri Rongchong, Borsum, Gorajan, Damrang, Malang, Jopur, Huwapara, Malchapara, Salbari, the backdrop, and Malang Siminaguri of the Himanonglang citizenship, and also the Leja Dubi village in Jirngam citizenship. When taken into consideration regarding the East, East Janta Hills district. The Meghalaya government in the year 2011 had claimed over 11.20 square kilometer, 11.20 square kilometers. But now it has got only 6.42 square kilometer, meaning that we lost 
about 4.78 square kilometer in Ratachera sector. Moreover, we had fully lost our ownership of the Malida River. The Meghalaya government had violated the paragraph 20 of the section of the Constitution of India, as well as the Assam Reorganization Act 1969 and the Northeast Reorganization Act 1971 in signing the MOU. No prior information, consultation, and permission was seek by the state government from the different Hima Kasi and the state council before signing the MOU. This show that the government do not respect the traditional institutions and the stakeholders. And even more, no consultation was properly made within the house. Another important fact is that the state government did not include any member from the KHDC and JHADC in the regional committee during the first phase. Henceforth, while reviewing the MOU, all these issues needs to be rectified at the earliest possible. Therefore, I suggest the government of the day that the same mistake should not be repeated while going ahead with the phase two, which is highly sensitive. Local MLS and the local MDCs of those areas should be included as the member of the regional committees for the settlement of interstate boundary between Meghalaya and Assam. To conclude, I would like to state that the need of the hour is to shape public opinion for peaceful borders and redouble efforts for a political solution to this all decades disputes. With these few words, Mr. Speaker, sir, I once again thank you for allowing me to move this and to discuss the second phase of interstate boundary settlement between Meghalaya and Assam and also the need of reviewing the MOU signed between the two chief ministers, that is, the chief minister of Meghalaya and the chief minister of Assam. Thank you. I resume my seat. Sir, I also rise to support the special motion moved by Charles, Charles Mangar, Emily from Mahoti, that this House do now discuss the second phase of interstate boundary settlement between Meghalaya and Assam and the need of reviewing the MOU signed between the two chief ministers. Sir, after the MOU was signed between the MDA government and its counterpart, we have seen that members belonging to the ruling side were in a jubilant mood and claimed that their government is the only government that has the courage and the sincerity to solve the problem. However, sir, I am privileged uh, to be an MLA from 2008-2000 till 2018. So I have the experience, sir, that this is not the only government that is concerned and serious in solving the border problem. In fact, I find that the government during my time was more transparent and more careful about dealing 
with this issue. They have been able to take everybody on board. There was an all-party meeting and they have done a diligent work where they have documented the claim uh, made before the government of Assam. I, hear, I have with me here, sir, the presentation on issues relating to interstate boundary with Assam before the all-party meeting dated 29 July 2015. And here it includes, you know, there was a mention that the difference of an interstate boundary since it was there since the creation of Meghalaya as a separate state. So, and difference of inter-district boundary even during British and Assam time. Mention also was made that long outstanding issue cause of immense hardship, economic dislocation and breakdown of law and order in the affected areas. And in this document, it was also highlighted about the meetings of chief ministers held on the 5th of June 2010. And in this meeting, it was agreed in earlier that Meghalaya should present documents in support of its claim. Consequently, the government of Meghalaya has prepared this document and sent to the government of Assam. And before that, the then government has issued a public notice inviting documents, consultation with district council, DCs, etc. Sir. Revenue Department prepared documents justification for each sector along with maps based on the supporting documents available. Having regard to constitutional provision, relevant notification and maps as well as historical, ethnic and linguistic link linkages. Sir, Chief Minister, I mean Chief Secretary <coughs> of Meghalaya handed over sector-wise document justification maps to Chief Secretary Assam to join committee meeting held in a joint committee, I mean to say, held on 9 8 2011. <coughs> Chief Secretary of Assam <coughs> informed DO dated 2nd 9 2011, examining the papers received and will take some time for completing pre preliminary scrutiny. Thereafter, Assam asked for topo sheet, maps, and lists of villages for areas claimed by Meghalaya. And these were furnished on 17 second, uh, 2012. Sir, I just, uh, I would like to touch only those areas which, uh, six differences which MOU has been signed <coughs> between MDA government and uh, the counterpart Assam. When it comes to Taravari area, sir, here, according to the claim of Meghalaya, it was mentioned here that the area is 4.69 square kilometer. And mention also was made in this claim that this area was part of Rambrai's aimship, taken over by British and made into Nonglang Sirdership, sir. Order dated 22nd, 1879 of DC transferred the Sirdership to KH, Cassie and Gentle District land revenue to be deposited in that district. Therefore, sir, according to this claim, historical was part, historically, it was part of Kasi State 1876. Notification corroborates this, sir. Sir, coming to Gizang forest area, this has a total area of 13.53 square kilometer. And the same claim has been made by the state government of Meghalaya. This area was part of Rambrai's aimship, order dated 20th 2nd, 1879 of DC transferred citizenship to K. Kasi and Gentle District. Ask Mausada to collect and deposit revenue in Shillong Treasury, historically on the Kasi and Gentle Hills, notification of 1876. Number of villages in the area fall within 29 Mautinkut District Council constituency. Map also has been supplied on this regard. Coming to the Hahim area, sir, the total area is 3.51 square kilometer. 
Again, historically, this area was part of Ramrai's aimship. On the jurisdiction of Kasi and Giant Hills District, notification number 1430, dated 14 1876 Chief Commissioner asked 1877 DC Kasi and Giant Hills District to collect house tax of Nonglang Eleka. Issue of interpretation on ground of notification determined boundaries of Kamrup and United Kasi and Giant Hills. Nongriang Si citizenship and Nonglang citizenship on the constituency number 11 of District Council and later part of 29 Mountain Court constituency. 1961 census shows it is a part of Nongpo police station, area inhabited largely by local tribals. At Hiveri, Lejadubi, part of 22nd Mountain Court Assembly constituency, as per electoral roll of 1970. And a map also is attached in this claim, sir. So, coming to Bordeaux, this has an area of 147.83 square kilometer. Historically, on the Cassis Ames, taken over by British after Utirat Singh revolt, census records of 1961-1971 show many villages on the non-popular station of United Kasi and Gentiles district. Number of villages, four. Within constituency number 17 of Kasi and Giant Hills District Council, as per 1951, delimitation, largely inhabited by local tribals. Map also has been attached in this regard, sir. So, sir, so coming to Boklapara, it has an area of 1.57 square kilometer. Historically, part of Mount Spung's aimship, ordered by Secretary in Polkal Appeal 20 of 1938. Confirm this. 1961-1971 census report shows that this area under Nongpo police station, largely inhabited by local tribals, part of constituency number 17 of Kasi and Giant Hills ADC as per delimitation of 1951. Part of constituency number 18 of Kasi and Giant Hills ADC as per delimitation of 1966. And part one of Jirang District Council constituency as per delimitation 1972. Map also was there. Kanapara Pilankata. It has an area of 2.25 square kilometer. Historically part of Milliam's aimship. Letter 1871 of DC Kambuk to DC Kasi and Giant Hills boundary as a quest of expediency and Mahal rights remain with the aim of Milliam. Further confirmed by letter of Deputy Superintendent Revenue Survey dated 5-12-1871 to DC's aims right not affected. Census record of 1961 and 1971 show number of villages on the Nongpo police station of United Kasi and Giant Hills District. Part of constituency number 17, Kasi and Giant JHADC as per delimitation of 1951. Part of constituency number 18 of KHADC as per delimitation of 1966. Part of one Jirang District Council constituency as per delimitation of 1972. So, this exercise, I can say, was done diligently. So, to claim that MDA government is the only government that has done a marvelous work as far as the settlement of boundary issue, sir, I think it is not fair at all, sir. We must also give a credit to the previous government who have diligently compiled this document and placed before the Assam government. I don't know, though the present government, the MDA government, we know has constituted regional committees to go into the detail of settling the boundary in these six areas. Sir. But I don't know how many of you who claim, who praise your leadership, have ever seen or even read the report of the regional committees. As far as my information goes, sir, most of the recommendations of the regional committees have not been considered. 
And I don't know whether this is going to be a legal document or not, sir. Because the government is guided by a rule. And there is a law, government of Meghalaya, law, a department, cabinet affairs department, rules of executive business of the government of the state of Meghalaya. And if we go according to the rule, so in para 11 and 12, here it is mentioned that orders or instruments made or executed by on be or on behalf of the government of the state of Meghalaya shall be expressed to be made or executed in the name of the governor. Orders or instruments of this government of the state shall be expressed to be made in the name of the governor and shall be signed either by the chief secretary, a principal secretary, commissioner and secretary, a secretary and an additional secretary, a joint secretary, a deputy secretary, an under secretary or such other officer as may be authorized by the government and such signature shall be deemed to be the proper authorization of such other or <coughs> instrument. I think this instrument that is written here may also be called a kind of a memorandum of understanding that the two governments have entered upon. In this memorandum of understanding, we see that it is the Chief Minister of Assam and the Chief Minister of Meghalaya who are the signatory on this MOU. So I don't know, sir, I leap to the wisdom of the government whether this MOU will stand in the court of law. So, and we used to hear a phrase, and that is exactly from our honorable deputy chief minister, that the government, the state government will adopt a give and take policy. So here I've already read out, sir, the area claim by the state government. And what happened in these six areas of differences? I don't see that there is, you know, apply a give and take policy, a phrase which was properly, properly used by members of the treasury bench. Sir, so in Gizang area, the total area is 13.53 square kilometer and it goes 10.63 square kilometer to Assam. And Meghalaya is being able to retain with the rest of that area, sir. Sir, Buklapara, out of 1.57 square kilometer, again, 1.01 square kilometer gone to Assam. Kanapara Pilankata area, area with 2.29 square kilometer, 1.7 square kilometer again has gone to Assam. Southeastern portion of the boundary, Ratashera, out of 11.20 square kilometer, the Assam managed to get 4.78 square kilometer. So if we plus all the areas being given to Assam under this MOU, it comes to 18.19 square kilometers something, sir. And we are left with 18.6 square kilometer. So in this situation, where do we stand to gain? As the Honorable Chief Minister has claimed that this deal that the state government, the, the Meghalaya as a state, has gained from this MOU, sir. So, sir, I feel that it was not done in a proper way, in a transparent manner. The government did not bother to take everyone on board. They left the traditional heads. They don't involve the district council. And they don't even care about the people living in the border areas. I would not mind if the people living in the border areas accept this decision taken by the government. But we know there are protests. So therefore, sir, I feel that it is a fit case for the government of the day to review 
and we look into this MOU and I would also like to request to be more conscious when you start to negotiate about the second phase of settlement in the border areas. So I don't think we will be able to allow the government or anyone to take us for a ride. As public representative, we know that Meghalaya is a very small state. How can we allow the leadership of the state to hand over more than 18 square kilometer to Assam? Which is why, sir, yesterday when I raised, when I participate in the debate on the governor's address, I had made a mention that anything which is done in haste will always end up in waste. So I think we are in the losing sight as a state of Meghalaya. On what ground can we claim that this MOU has gained us? This MOU has uh, managed to gain the state of Meghalaya. So therefore, sir, I strongly support the mover of this special motion and I earnestly request the Chief Minister, the government, we will work together but please take us also into confidence. It doesn't mean that because some government in the past have failed to address this problem that you will have the right to decide without the people's support, without the consideration of the people especially living in the border areas. So with these few words, sir, I resume my seat.